Greetings and salutations, this is Emperor Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Hello. We're going to be showing you today our Gallic army for Hail Caesar. Uh, this is in 6mm uh, to go up against our Marian Roman army. Uh, we're planning on a campaign, um, Conquest of Gaul, which is uh, Julius Caesar's Conquest of Gaul. So we've got the Marian army to fight for Julius Caesar and with this army to fight for the Gauls. So. That's good. This is basically the other, the other half of the video we showed you last. Yeah. Uh, these are the Gauls. They're nice little figures. They're 6mm from Bacchus. Um, the wine drinking god of the Romans and the god of hangovers, which is always a good god to have if you're a Roman. One, one of my favourite gods, to be honest. He, he was a really nice. God, he, he walks around dressed in grapes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, so we'll just run you over the Gallic army and then do a few other little bits. Right. I don't know how many people play Gauls. Most of you probably play in 28mm. These are 6mm, so it's basically the same thing but smaller. Uh, they're based to Hail Caesar. Um, normally when we do 6mm we base Topolemus, uh, which is a pretty generic basing system, it's 60 by 30 and you can do quite a lot with it. Uh, you can also do it on 60 by 60 and they look really impressive, we did our Napoleonics like that didn't we? Yeah we did. Um, so these, these are in uh, Hail Caesar which is 40 by 40, they're 40 centimetres by 40 centimetres. I believe there's a measurement in inches for it but we don't use inches. Um, so yeah, we'll run down the army. Um, where should we start? At the front. Here. Okay, these guys at the front here are skirmishers. Uh, they're your standard light infantry skirmishers. Uh, they're armed with... If that is going to attempt to focus on this. No, it doesn't want to. No, we'll just, we'll just leave it to arms length. Like the Marian army we did. Yeah, same with the Marian army. Uh, right, the, these uh, tiny little guys at the front are... Um, javelin guys, uh, they're, I think there's some, jav there's some javelins and some slingers mixed in in there. They're quite nice little figures. I'm firing a base so they don't look empty. Yeah. So have more around. Yeah. Them, um, they're armed with uh, javelin and and shield. Right, so they're not any slingers in there. I thought they had some slingers for this army. How oh, well, never mind. So they're all armed with javelins. Uh, so these, these are standard skirmish troops. Uh, normally people put four infantry on a Hail Caesar 6mm base um, in 6 uh, in six mil. Uh I, I thought that looked really sparse, so I put six on instead, I just thought that looked... More, quite, more like a unit. Yeah, uh, and I based them in groups of two, so you've got little two guys there, two guys there, two guys there, which I think it looks quite good. And That's probably what happens. Yeah, well, they work in, in pairs, I suppose. I think they're hard to for them, uh, No, not them guys. It was the Romans when they tried to ch chase after them. Uh, you can use this army for British as well. Uh, I should mention that. Uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, now we'll move on to the next one. I'll just slide the camera across. Slide. These are your generals. They're the standard um, generals you get from Bacchus in 6mm scale and if I can try and get this camera it's not easy to use this camera because there's a huge light on top of it how's that? that's better isn't it? yeah they're, they're the whole pod of lights yeah they're, they're the generals, they're, they're quite nice little figures um, I've done one guy with a chariot which looks really cute and they are quite nice little chaps uh, they've got a little, there's a guy with a little trumpet and there's a guy with uh, I think one of them there is drinking a goblet of probably wine uh, or mead actually uh, no uh, beer wasn't it from Britain uh, yeah uh, there's a guy just there who is carrying the severed head of an enemy which is all nice the, the, the Gauls were very much into beheading people um, it's, it's a barbarian thing and you got a guy there with someone's severed head on a pole, which is also quite nice. So there's some nice little command unit, uh, nice little figures for the command. Um, right, moving on to the next one is these guys. Now these guys are chariots, 
and they're quite nice little figures if it will focus, focus at all and these chariot troops you only get one chariot choice in the Gallic army if you do the British army you can get and the chariots are classed as cavalry so you can get like 40% of the army um, where's my rule book? I don't know where my rule book is uh, hang on, I, I always get your rule book I gave it just talk to yourselves I've got my Marian army thing here no, not Marian Gauls, right, the Gauls. Um, right, for standard Gauls, um, you only get one option of a chariot. Uh, basically, it works out at 10% uh, of the army can, can be chariots, which is a very small amount of, of numbers. Uh, the cavalry works out 25% of the army. Uh, warband half the army, uh, infantry in total roughly 75% of the army. So that's quite a lot of um, infantry with not much cavalry. They're not really a cavalry heavy army. So we'll move on to the actual Gauls themselves. If I can just adjust it back. These chaps at the back here, they're fanatics, which means they're completely naked. Uh, they're running around completely naked, uh, painted blue. Now, in reality, the Gauls um, were completely painted blue, as in they were blue. Um, they were blue people. The Smurfs. Yeah, they were blue people running around, and they wiped uh, lime in their hair to make it white. So they had white hair and blue skins, like something out of Star Trek. Uh, so they would have looked absolutely terrifying. However, if you paint figures like that on the gaming table, people go, No, they don't look right. Because people watch too much Hollywood. So we've done them the way that people expect, which is, um, we've just done them naked with, with uh, tattoos all over their bodies, which is very nice. Uh, yeah, quite depressing, really, if you think about it. Uh, okay, these guys are fanatics. Uh, the list of the fanatics in the rule book. Um, they're Gestati. Uh, basically, in Celtic society, what generally happened was the when young men got to a certain age, I don't know, 14, 15, they were thrown out of the tribe. They just kicked them out. Um, it's a very good way of preventing inbreeding. Um, if you have children with your cousin, then um, you, you're going to lower your IQ points by I don't know, 12, 15 points, something like that. So the Celts had obviously learnt that. Um, close family relations aren't a good idea and they solved the problem by simply kicking all the young lads out of the village. They kept the girls and the girls would go on and live, the, live in the village because uh, Celtic society was female orientated so the women ran everything, well more or less ran everything and the um, so, so the women would go on from generation to generation and generation and names would be passed down from women uh, from women's children to women's children uh, whereas the boys would be kicked out of the village. Now, the way you get the boys back is in battle. The Celts fought all the time and were constantly at war with someone. So they were const they had a constant feed of people to go to war with and they were constantly fighting battles. And the Gestati, if I just adjust this down, I can get a much better close-up of, of these chaps. I just adjust it like that. How's that? Is that my focus? Yeah, I can see more of it now. There we go. That's the Celt guys. You can see the naked guys. Uh, these are all the fanatics here. So the Gestati would be kicked out, and they would um, basically uh, live off the land. They would hunt around in packs. Um, pretty savage really and when they, they when there was a battle in the summer after you'd done your crops you went and went and had a fight with the next village on because you didn't like them or you wanted to steal something from them or just for the hell of battle um, the Castati would turn up and side with one side or the other and they would fight naked um, on our you know so, so they're not showing any sign signs of um, wounds and illnesses and stuff so they look healthy um, and they would fight hard and if they won they got to join the village they got to come home with the winning army and they got to uh, join the village and that's how you got new men into the 
into the village, which which is a it's, it is a way of dealing with uh, such things. Um, it means that you have the toughest and strongest men surviving or boys surviving, uh, showing that they're good and strong and they're capable of defending the village, and so you accept them into the village and then they live in the village um, along with the young girls who, who, who were kept in your village because you kicked the other ones out. So yeah, it, it, it's a way of um, it's just their culture. And that, that that was ancient British culture. So that's what these guys are. Um, they're classed as fanatics, um, probably because they really didn't have a choice. Um, winter was coming, remember, and if winter came along and you'd been kicked out of the village, you were going to starve to death. So, yeah, no, it's not, not a very nice way to live, really. So I move on to the next troops. It's probably been good kick out, getting, being kicked out of the village when you were uh, in summer. I assume he was kicked out at the beginning of summer, I'm not really sure. Um, he would probably be from... He would certainly be kicked out before May Day, um, which was their big festival time where they set fire to people and stuff. And Wicked Man. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think, what was the Wicked Man? Uh, May Day. Of course, the Maypole is uh, Celtic. That's when you, you captured someone from another village, tied them to a post <laughs> and stuff. Religion! Yeah, look, religion's nuts. Um, just say, God save me from your followers. Uh, yeah, so the Romans turned up and pretty much said, you're behaving like a bunch of barbarians, behave. Taught them to read and write, and taught them how toilets work. And and, 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 and they, they, they became quite happy and, and became us. Oh, yeah. Oh, where we're here today. Thank God for the Romans. Otherwise, we would still be living in mud huts. Yeah, I think we would have gone to the part learning how a... Uh, must the fall works? No, I wouldn't have done that either. Why, why, why on earth would, would the Celts have ever come up with a musket ball? Um, because someone else would have come to us. The Chinese Empire? They could have... No, they wouldn't have Well, no, I mean, the Chinese founded... Uh, technically found America first. Right, if we were wrong, uh, wrong, we wouldn't have discovered Japan, so... Yeah, do it. Nah, well, not, well, not Japan. I'm not sure if the Romans knew about Japan. They certainly knew about China. China and Rome did send ambassadors to each other and they traded with China. Until it collapsed. Until the Roman Empire collapsed, yeah. Um, so there was, there was a lot of trade between China and Rome. In fact, most of the trade between China and Rome, which is why Rome, the Roman Empire finally fell. Because the trade routes were cut and it caused a massive economic crash. Uh, no plague. Tied to the plague. Um, yeah, the whole thing just fell apart. That's the wheels coming off uh, and civilization. The wood, shields, weak. We would because of bad weather. Um, we went through a mini ice age at the time, uh, causing extremely bad winters. Uh, it was dark for four years. Um, was that Krakatoa blowing up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Massive ice cloud. That was one of the other times Krakatoa blew its top and it caused a mini ice age. And that would, that just came at the wrong time for the Romans. Any other time, I think the if Romans would have survived. Krakatoa actually was still around and actually happened. We don't think we'll be able to make it. Why? Because we aren't. Because uh, we have kids now and not don't really know how to fend for themselves. Well, they'll they'll just be the staff. Sorry, if you have stupid people in your society, went to a school and didn't learn anything, they're the staff. They're the people who work for you. So anyway, you need back to these. you you need people to work for you. You need soldiers, and where else are you going to get soldiers from? Right, there you go. Actually, soldiers are... are, are, are well, we, we live in England, so we, have a, we still have the leftovers of a class system. Um, soldiers will be higher up the scale. They'll be like middle class if you're a soldier. So um, it's, it's this sort of peasant class we still have in Britain today. Um, mostly self-made. Some people are proud to not know anything about history. But you meet people and they say, oh, I did really bad in school. Are you proud of that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm really happy. I didn't learn out in school. <laughs> I didn't. You idiot. You total idiot. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm unemployed. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, sorry. Back to Celts. Yeah, Celts had a way of dealing with the unemployed. And they put them in Wicked Men and set fire to them. Um, so here, here we have... That was anybody in general, really. That was just anybody, hey, yeah. You. Just... you got a job. 
Are you working for the economy? No? Well, come here. We've got a nice wooden recommend for you. Actually, it's not as bad as I make it out. Um, they actually genuinely believe that when you died, you went to heaven. Or you went to the other world. The mirror world. When, when they, world. Well, the reason they thought lakes were magic was because they thought it was a mirror and they could see through into the other world. That's what they actually thought. So if they saw a mirror, when the Romans showed them mirrors, they were like, Wow! You can see the other world! No, it's a mirror. You just put metal on the back and it's, it's shiny and you can see it. Like, get some bronze and you just polish well, it up. They're, pro they're probably amazed to see who that actual will actually look like. Yeah. yeah. Who's that ugly person? Oh, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, all of the, 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 the they did have mirrors. I'm, I'm being cruel to the to the Celts. They were actually quite well. They weren't certainly weren't civilized, but they, they they were certainly highly technologically advanced. You know, the British never went through the Bronze Age. No, I didn't. We skipped the Bronze Age entirely because Europe had done it for us. <laughs> so we, we met the Europeans, and, and they gave us the technology. So we never actually went through the Bronze Age in Britain. So we, there is Bronze Age in Britain, but we're we not Bronze. It. We weren't Bronze Age. We we, we, we skipped the whole. Uh, we went straight from co uh, straight from uh, uh, copper to steel, uh, copper to iron, basically. Completely well, we are not if our steel works. Yeah. Um, well, that's mainly due to industrialists. And the fact that Britain was, at the time, one of the heaviest natural resource places in the world, which is why the Romans came. Um, Britain, you, you could walk around Britain and just pick iron ore and and off tin the off the floor, just tin was just lying everywhere. You just picked it up and said, oh, tin, <laughs> that's great. Not meaning, I uh, someone could invent it, give me all the iron. Oh, it's from there on the floor. Yeah. Uh, I, will, I will just tell you what these are in front of you. Uh, these here, that's a normal Celtic unit, and that is a large Celtic unit. Um, the Celts can have small units or large units. Uh, as you've seen with the Jews in our Hells these again square millimeter. Yep. The uh, Jewish army can have very large units and so that's what these are. Uh, you can have the same for the Celts basically. Um, which yeah, I, I like the Celtic army, but I think he is very much like the Jewish army, except the Jewish army can be mostly skirmishers. Whereas the Celtic army you've got a limitation on skirmishers. Uh, what's the rule say? You can only have half the amount of skirmishers to your units. Right, so if you've got five units, or sorry, if you've got six units, you can have three skirmishers, basically. So, whereas with the Jewish forces, you can have half your entire army of skirmishers. Mm. So, yeah, um, you're mostly heavy infantry. All these guys, all heavy infantry. Um, and I like the Celts, I think they're a good army. Although, I'm not going to be playing them, am I? You're, you're, aren't you playing, playing uh, yeah. You're playing the Celts. Uh, but yeah, I do like the Celt army. I, th I think it's really nice, and I think they've done a good job with it in the rules. You know, some armies tend to be a little bit underclassed or not really representative, but the Celtic army certainly seems to be a pretty good army in the rules. Sorry, where, where were we with the Celt? Well, we've just done all well, of them. We should do them back. Yeah, the guys at the back. Uh, they're just basically Celtic cavalry. Uh, there's some light horse, which I put five to a base, which are these guys. And there's some others, which I think I put nine to a base. Uh, they're the standard cavalry. And them. Yeah, uh, you can use them for Romans. In fact, you can use everything in this army other than fanatics for Romans. So, uh, and chariots. Romans never used chariots as, as allies. Because they were never okay. allied to someone who used chariots. So. It would have been good if the Romans actually had chariots. Why? Yeah. What use would they be? They're useless. Thanks. Yeah. Useless. Useless. Um, that video we did in the fascia? Yeah. It's just chariots? Chariots are... They, they were used by the Celts. That They were used by, um, as basically mobile weapons platforms. So the chariot would run really fast past the enemy and throw your spear in or, or fire your bow or whatever and then ride away really quick and get out of the way. Uh, the Romans just ignored them. Generally, uh, they weren't worried about chariots because they well, destroyed um, most of them. The Borussia. Boudicca. Boudicca, that's um, it. Right, well, when Julius Caesar invaded Rome, uh, Britain, um, his troops actually managed to catch all the chariots um, all stalled with no crews. 
Who? So they, they basically destroyed all the chariots by cutting the ropes. Who was it who invaded England and gone to shore and walked and ran off straight away because um, cause he was scared of what we, who, when we, cause we were painted fully in blue? Um, the Romans. That yeah, uh, that that was one of the times, one of the failed attempts of Julius Caesar landing. Yeah. Uh, he tried to invade, and he saw all the army lined up on the beaches, and he went, ah, "Not today. I think I'll, I'll go back to. I just remembered. I left. I left. I left the potatoes burning. I know the Romans didn't have potatoes. Um, no, the, the, the they basically um, saw the British army and didn't really fancy fighting it." And rode home. At all, it came back again, and nothing opposed them because they weren't well, expecting it. Um, you see, when Julius Caesar decided to land in Britain, he uh, sorry, the, the second invasion. Um, he he landed and found no one to fight. Um, pretty much. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Gaul rebelled, so he had to withdraw his troops, which meant that any other further attempt to land in Britain would. He, he just couldn't do it because all, all of the stuff happened to his political career. So it was really left to later people to deal with Britain. Um, Julius Caesar did fight a, quite a few battles against the Britons. Um, the Britons had supplied the Gauls with weapons. Uh, most steel for the um, Celtic army came from Britain. Um, a lot of British mercenaries fought in Celtic and Gallic armies. And this was really winding up the, uh, Julius Caesar. And so Julius Caesar. Um, led a punitive expedition against Britain. Um, he ended up fighting most of the campaign in a fortress, but he did eventually win and march out and, and, and he took London, which was... Was that Cavalier Dunham then? Or, or, was that right uh, um, well, he, he took the capital of, of the Celts and the Celts sued for peace. <clears throat> and the Celts gave him a huge amount of gold, which was quite plentiful in Britain, and Julius Caesar went home. Um, unfortunately, it coincided with the Gallic Rebellion when Vercingetrix, who was a Roman cavalry commander, led a rebellion, tried to make himself king of all of Gaul. Um, so Julius Caesar had to go back to Britain, uh, sorry, back to Gaul to stop the rebellion in Gaul, and that, that was the Gallic, Rebo Gallic Revolt. Um, I suppose that the, the period you'd call Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar, uh, not Hail Caesar, um, Conquest of Gaul. The Conquest of Gaul wasn't really a big, it was a massive military undertaking. Most of it was making deals with different people. They were mostly skirmishes. It wasn't until Vercingetrix there was actually a massive open warfare. So it, it's not what you might think you know, in your head. For, the, for 10 years Julius Caesar basically played politician in Gaul, going to one warlord and saying would you help you know would you join our little empire and going to another warlord and saying would you stop fighting that guy if we just persuaded him to stop fighting you so can we work together and then going to another guy and saying why did you just attack that guy I've just made a deal with him and and lots of arguments and, and then eventually Vercingetrix comes along and raises rebellion. Uh, Boudicca was later that was what 40 AD? Nero time. Nero time? So what's that? For, for, oh, when was Nero? Um, I'd have to look it up. I haven't got my uh, computer next to me, I'm afraid. And I'm the hi, Danny, in the game room, do I? No, we need, we need, we need, we need to bring it down here. Um, yeah, we've so it was forty something. I'm sure it was in the forties. I'm positive it was in the forties. I know uh, who who invaded Britain. Um, Come on, Roman Emperor invaded Britain successfully. After Nero. Caligula. No, Caligula did it. Caligula failed to invade Britain because his army re revolted and said, we're not invading Britain. Those Brits are eight foot tall and terrifying and they paint themselves blue and they're naked. I'm not attacking that. I ain't going to Britain. Have you seen Britain? It's terrifying and it's all trees and it's hot. I don't like it. Incidentally, Britain was hot then. It was rainforest. Um, so the Romans didn't want to invade and, and, and uh, so Caligula to punish them, he couldn't execute them, he couldn't decimate them, so instead he decided to uh, make them collect sheet seashells as punishment, which made them while look silly. The, while all the Britons stared at them. 
Oh, I, I dare say the Britons weren't even aware that they were going to invade. <laughs> just... um, yeah, so basically... It's like when Caesar invaded, there was no one there to oppose him. We just, they didn't care. <laughs> Yeah, well, the first invasion, he 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 was he had he they fought for every inch of ground. The second invasion, they just walked ashore. There were no no Celts to fight. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Caligula, no, um, the guy after Caligula. What's the guy after Caligula? Claudius? Good old Uncle C -C Claudius. He's the one who invaded Britain successfully uh, and won. And then you had the Boudicca Revolt, which... Oh, Boudicca Revolt would have been in the 60s. Because Nero was emperor. Yeah. So, that... yeah, so it would have been, a, it would have been the 60s. Hey, so, back to this. Well, this is this, this is this. You can fight all these battles with this. Although the Romans would have the wrong uh, shields. Um, we've got married Romans. Um, yeah. Romans for Boudicca would have, worn, would have had um, the oblong shields so it's the wrong shield for the for that particular war if you're going to do you could do the invasion of britain under julius caesar by all means um but the uh, augustus changed the shields to the oblong shaped shields uh instead of the oval shields so you, you need different shields for that um but that's it that's that's everything that that is about all we have to say um there was a question about boudicca you had yeah, you just, that, 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 was, that, that was the question. Well, I can't remember what I said. Okay, I'll leave you to it. Um, yeah. So this is our Gallic army. Um, we could talk about goals all day. Uh, sorry, yeah, I remember now. Um, oh. Boudicca, uh, the chariots used? Chariots. Uh, Boudicca would have used a small amount of chariots. Not many. The chariots had fallen out of fashion. And her tribe was about the only tribe that still used chariots. Because... They just fell out of fashion. I assume it was hard getting the horses. Huh. Um, given, given, given the Romans were buying horses by massive amounts, um, it would have been hard to maintain horse stock to actually have cavalry or chariots. And cavalry, Britain's never had cavalry. Uh, partly due to Britain being entirely woodland. And a rainforest. And rainforest. And it was very hard to actually... Uh, the, the best way of getting around was basically on a chariot. <laughs> it was the best way of moving around. But when the Romans turned up and built roads... Um, it, it's easy to get around. Yeah, because you could just get a cart. Or take the railway. So, I've not been mad here. The Romans had railways. Uh, they, they weren't steam engine railways. Um, but they put carts on rails and horses pulled them. It was a lot easier getting around. Um, trams. They would have been more like trams actually than a railway. You know what a tram is? Yes. No tram is. I don't mean the modern tram, which is a glorified bus. That hangs in the air for some reason on a thing. That's an L. We don't have L's in Britain. <laughs> We've got one in Sheffield, a tram, which is... Oh yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Which is rubbish. I don't, I don't like it. But that's just me. I think we should go back to the old trams. No. No, they were awesome. No. They were awesome. No. So there we have it. That, that's, that's the end. Uh, that, that was the goals. Uh, we're going to be playing a few campaigns of the goal, I think. I think we'll do Julius Caesar's Conquest of Gaul, or maybe one of the one of the earlier parts of the book. But we have got a video coming out soon, our first battle, battle here. Yes, we have our first battle in our gaming room on its way, which should be interesting to do. Yeah. I do apologise for completely blitzing you with history and stuff. Um, uh, we've got a Tom history behind of why we're doing this thing of, along with the Maris. Marian, uh, yeah, um, I did give you a rough pot of history of Marius himself. Uh, I didn't go into Hail Caesar. Uh, sorry, Caesar. So Hail Caesar. Ah! I didn't go into Caesar. Um, I should have really done, given that we're, play, we're not playing the Marius period, we're playing the Caesarian period, um, I should have really given you a, something about Caesar, um, which I didn't, and I should have done. Uh, but see, Julius Caesar was awesome. He, he did a lot of stuff. It's a family trait. Um, Marius was Caesar's... Um, G yeah, uncle. uncle, uncle, and little Julius um, had Uncle Marius come over all the time. J Julius Caesar grew up in Gaul, so technically, passport-wise, if you're in the EU, he he, he would be a, a French, a, a, a Gaul, a Gallic. Um, and Julius Caesar grew up in Gaul, and and Uncle Marius would come and visit. Imagine having the greatest general of the Roman Empire come and visit on on a regular basis. 
Um, and we need to do. We could do more on Marius. Uh, Until your fans from going going to anywhere around what Rome owned. Well, the civil war between Seneca and Marius was was vast. Which I feel we should go into civil war on a, a video where we actually just talk about the history of the Roman Empire. Okay, we'll do that then if 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 that's what you want to do. So um, that's where we are. Um, that's it. That's it. This video. I'm finishing the yes, video now. I'll I'm finished. I can't take it anymore. So anyway, I'm hungry and I can hear food being cooked upstairs. So it's like another like hour away. <laughs> I can smell it. I can definitely smell food. The, okay, where have you said? Yeah, I can. It, it's it's like a spider sense, but I'm not a spider. I was about to say that you're not a spider. You just have eight legs. Nah, nah, nah. Right, if you enjoy Spider Man doesn't have eight legs. He can just make webs. Look, I'm sure Spider-Man actually has machines that make, like, strings. Not in the comic. No, 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 In the, I'm sorry. In the comic, Spider-Man had webs come out of the palms of his hands, and he could climb walls by using his hands as suctiony things. Which is funny, because that's not how spiders crawl. So they have claws. Say if you video, please leave a like and subscribe. Spiders have claws, they don't, they're not sticky. And comment down below. They're not what? sticky. I can't, Seriously. Shut up! <laughs> and comment down below what you think of our new kilt slash doll army. It's not as good as Ant-Man. Ant-Man's cool. That's everything from me. <laughs> That's everything from him. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope we didn't go too far off track. Uh, but we will start our historian season soon. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. This has been Vespasian and his trusty sidekick. Bye.